Yeah, Liz Cheney's tragic loss in Wyoming. This is Think Tech, American Issues Take Two. Uh, we are joined today by Stephanie Stoll Dalton, regular contributor, uh, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, regular contributor, and Chuck Crumpton. We love to have him on the show. Hi, hi everybody. Aloha. Uh, now, so Liz, uh, Liz Cheney, you know, we were talking about uh, one interesting rhetorical point before the show began. And that is, uh, okay, she had um, an epiphany uh, in and around January 6th, and uh, her um, enlightenment happened right around that event, the insurrection. But for the four years prior, she was a conservative Republican. She was voting with Trump. One could say that she was a Trumper. So how does this affect things, uh, Stephanie? Um, does this change your view when you focus on that particular transition? Well, she's such a, an ultra conservative herself and very in, in, embedded intellectually in, in that in that way, in that philosophy or in that in those politics. And uh, I think it took her a while to be as disturbed as she finally became. Uh, and it, it, you know, for um, to um, Im to go to the impeachment, you know, so she must have been think to be able to impeach him. She must to vote for his impeachment. She must have been thinking about it for a while. So I'm sure. I mean, I don't think conservatives isn't that is part of their their uh, you know persona is they move slowly and thoughtfully and deeply through issues. So I think she probably has been working on this for a while. I'm not trying to defend her. But I just feel that she wouldn't do anything uh, very, uh, you know, knee jerky. So she's, I would say she's been working on it for a while and was disturbed enough to finally take that stand that she did. You know, on American issues, take one and take two, we have been wrestling with the question of how do you draw people out of the cult? You know, what makes them, if anything, what makes them come out of the cult and realize the reality uh, of Trump? Um, and, you know, I mean, one one possibility which was suggested in the show yesterday was that if Trump got sick uh, and passed, um, that would the cult would break up like 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 a little balloon gone, finished because it's personal. It's just him. Nobody could do it like him. Um, none of the politicians on the, on the horizon can do it like him. Um, but, you know, this suggests, uh, you know, the strange journey of Liz uh, Cheney suggests that maybe it takes some real violence, some real extraordinary, completely, totally unprecedented outrage, some real mm, threatening attack on the democracy right in our faces to change people's minds. You know, the, her journey, what does it teach us, uh, Stephanie? Did uh, uh, you? I heard you say my name, Jay. I'm just uh, thinking that she's been under um, a lot of strain. I'm sure she herself has had cognitive dissonance for a while and probably stepped up to resolving that tension intellectually mm -hmm. and finding out what her base was and, and what her ethics were. So, yeah, well, you know, Cynthia. I mean, I, I would suggest from Stephanie's remark, there's roughly uh, 60, 70 million people in the country with cognitive dissonance. Um, how do we wean them off and what have we learned from the experience of uh, Liz Cheney, if anything? Um, I'm going to use a quote from her concession speech, her non-concession concession speech, <laughs> right? People who served President Trump loyally testified that they all told him the election was not stolen or rigged and there was no massive fraud. That's why President Trump and others invent excuses, pretexts for people not to watch the hearings at all. But no citizen of this republic is a bystander. All of us have an obligation to understand what actually happened. We cannot abandon the, re the truth. Sorry, I wrecked that last part. We cannot abandon the truth and remain a free nation. Well, there's a great statement of it. I, I wonder how she was feeling and say, 
2018, 2019, before we got to the question of the stolen election, you know. Um, but, but putting that aside for a moment, uh, Cynthia, um, do you have any reservations about her now? When she says those magic words, when she made that, um, you know, that speech a couple days ago, it was powerful. Uh, we've all seen at least parts of it. Um, any reservations about, you know, the, the honesty of that speech, the, the, uh, her intentions in the matter? I cried. Um, to see that kind of integrity and courage um, and, and intention, because she's going forward. She's, I um, can't remember the name of it now. Uh, oh, shoot. Now, you, know, you know that she, she, she supported and, and applauded the reversal of Roe v. Wade, right? Just to give you she, one example of as, her right-wing you know, conservatism. Oh, yes. And as Stephanie said, she is an ultra conservative and always has been. She voted for Trump in 2020. That's how conservative she is. And how many other conservatives, though, held their nose and voted with Trump so that they could get their conservative values forward? Now, every other Republican but um, Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger are still holding their nose so that they can get what they want. To me, that means they are willing to sacrifice their integrity to get what they want. I heard you, I heard you both say that she voted for Trump in, um, in 2016. No, 2020. 2020 also? <laughs> yeah, she voted in 2020 for him. So yeah. this revelation took place uh, after the 2020 election. Uh, yeah, very sick. interesting. Chuck, you know, a lot, a lot of people are inspired by her. Uh, and more and more people say, I would, I would vote for her for president, um, despite her mm, conservative leanings. Uh, she can save our democracy. She is the hero we've been waiting for, the leader we've been waiting for. Um, but also a lot of people who like her, who like her, uh, say they would not vote for her. Where do you stand on that? Well, I noticed Cynthia had her hand up, so I'm going to defer. <laughs> okay. Cynthia, finish your thought, please. This oh, is like what happens in No, Congress, no, I was way. just putting my hand up and say I would I would support her and I might even vote for her. So Chuck, I wasn't trying uh, okay, to say okay. I don't want to answer. I was just saying I'll vote for her. That's all. Sorry. All right, Chuck. Thank you for being so courteous and, and chival <laughs> chivalrous. Anyway. <laughs> so what's your Hello? answer? I mean, first of all, if you're going to vote for someone that you believe is going to stand up for the values and the principles and the realities that this country needs to adopt, to uphold, and to enact and move forward, it's not going to be people like Liz Cheney. On this one issue, that's fine. I give her a lot of credit for having the courage to stand up for that, knowing that doing so as a Wyoming congressperson, that was probably going to cost her her seat. Kansager, similarly, others similarly. There was just an analysis out of 12 primary elections, eight of which Trump election deniers won, even against some incumbents, and four of which they lost. So it's not exclusive. Trump's control and influence in the party is still overwhelming, but it's overwhelming because of the fear he inspires in the people who dare to stand up against him. And one of the things that's interesting is yesterday, a quote was presented, and I don't recall whether it was in the Washington Post or the New York Times, by a tweet by a former Bush administration leader who basically said that the Republicans are the most inimical force, intentionally dangerous and destructive force to American democracy that he has seen in his lifetime 
And then the former director of the CIA from those times joined him in endorsing that sentiment. So we don't have a deliberative dialogue. We don't have anything reflecting a democracy. We have a battle from minority control through whatever means will achieve it, whether constitutional, legally appropriate, or simply manipulatable by power. That's what we got. Okay, that's been a nice show with you guys. I've enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> Uh, and Stephanie, you know, so so Liz Cheney gets up there. Clearly, I mean, we agree that she's a hero. She's courageous. We may or may not vote for her if there, that opportunity ever arose. Um, but uh, my question to you is, uh, is, is, is she encouraging others to do the same? Um, is her courage um, viral? Could it be viral? Are any other, uh, you know, representatives in Congress uh, likely to, to catch what she has? and to be Kate courageous the way she is? Or is this all kind of, um, you know, uh, a tree falling in the woods? Yeah, you know, Jay, th this is a huge question. I, you've rocked me actually with your very first opening question. Uh, she's She's fallen into the same category as all the others. Okay, like, like Pence. Pence is not a totally heroic because he could have said something on December the 6th. And uh, many, many people could have said things on November the 6th and uh, ahead of time when things were looking um, questionable. And none of these people did. No, no one let it out of the bag so that, that there would be a reasonable uh, opportunity to respond and um, take care of business. But so so she's actually falling into that category that I think she probably accuses others of or, put, you know, con considers others have done wrong about. And I hadn't thought that she was there just with them. So we're actually down to nobody who rang the bell. Nobody pushed the fire alarm. Nobody, nobody got the sprinkler out. Nobody closed the fire door. You know, nothing uh, happened until it was in progress and in um and and it was the exigent moment uh, for for Pence. So um, you're you're really raising a lot of questions. I think that um, no, I probably would not vote for her. To, you know, for president because um, she is not she's so conservative so i don't think that i would go there would i go there to flee trump again i don't know i mean it's that it's that difficult now well, that's a hard question if you had trump and cheney um and um you know every vote counts in some way uh, you know it's you you don't want to abstain you want to vote you want to make but yourself so heard yeah, because they, that'd be their Republican primary, and I don't have to vote in the Republican primary. Oh, well, that, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that with Cynthia. You know, why in the world would Liz Cheney run on the Republican ticket uh, for president oh, in 2024? Uh, she, you know, that is, that's against everything she said. It's against all her recently espoused principles. Uh, so my question to you is, uh, how should she handle the 2024? She did uh, in you know, uh, imply that she might consider. She said she might consider running in 2024, and and indeed she has a lot of people who are sending her money. She got millions in the war chest. She has a lot of people who who think she walks on water right now, uh, including a lot of Democrats. Um, but what is her best move in terms of running for president? That she could she could try the Republican ticket and get bashed again. Um, she could go independent, uh, and and she, you know the Republicans probably won't follow her, but at least she will have a voice till the end, right? Um, she could form a new party, call it the Cheney Party or something, uh, and uh, she could try to garner her support there. What's her best move in terms of um, you know expressing her views? Forget about whether she might win against a strong Republican candidate like Trump. Um, what's her best way to continue to to have the platform, to have a pulpit? 
Well, she's starting a program and I can't remember the name of it. I wish I could still, I, I even tried to look it up and couldn't come up with it again. She's going to start a group that is going to be solely focused. And this she has talked about and she did name it and everything. Um, that's going to be solely focused on getting rid of Donald Trump, calling out his lies and exposing him for who he is. So that is gonna give her a pulpit for the next two years, no problem. And depending on what kind of, you know, response she gets in that process, I think that will make her decisions going forward. But she could easily start another party and and get every single Republican that isn't a Trumplican on her side and really separate them out. Or she could run as a Republican, and if she loses, then she could go over to the independents. Now, and my example of that is when, um, when Clinton and uh, Bernie Sanders were both going for the Democratic primary, right? And Hillary Clinton won. I think that Bernie Sanders should have won as an run as an independent, and I believe a hundred percent he would have won. He was profoundly popular and neither Trump or Clinton were. So in that case, I think it would have been successful. In this case, I think it might work again. She wants to maybe undermine him by running against him. The only problem with that is, don't they have to sign some sort of something when they um, get involved in the debates and all the different things? And they could be excluded from all the main national debates and all the other stuff, and the fundraising and everything else, if they don't sign that paper that says that they're not going to go off to another party and run against the person if they lose. I don't know exactly how all that legality works, but I think over these next two years, what we're going to see is her exploring every avenue to get there, to completely get rid of Trump completely. And then DeSantis will keep all the Trumpers and hopefully the rest of the normal thinking Republicans will vote for her. And I have said for a long, long time, ever since they came out against the January 6th um, insurrection, that that's the Republican dream team is um, Liz Cheney for president and Adam Kinzinger for vice president. Yeah, Chuck, so here we're talking about the dream team. You know, hey, what about the Democrats? Have we forgotten about them? I mean, if, this, if we have a dream team going, this is a dream team that Democrats might vote for. Some of them have already said they would. Um, this, is, this is not necessarily a good thing for the Democrats uh, or for Roe v. Wade or for all of those issues where um, the Republicans, including these guys, uh, you know, would take positions that you and I don't like. Um, what effect has all of this got on the ability of the Democrats to field a good ticket and win in 2024. Their, their prospects are not that good anyway. But what, is this, what effect does this have on them? It's a great question, Jay. And I think the thing that's unfortunate is we don't have any idea of what the Democratic response and strategy are at this point to produce cathartic, courageous, high character leaders as candidates. Uh, are there people within their ranks? There may be, but they should have been identifying, cultivating, and putting those people forward well before this. Well, it's true. And you could make the argument that a lot of this is gonna shake out in November. And in case you haven't, haven't been counting, November is like mm, three months away. Um, there's not a lot of time left for the Democrats to make a move. You know, Biden uh, has not really said whether he will run, but I think the consensus is he's too old. Um, and uh, he hasn't put his arm around the shoulder of any other prospects. And, um, you know, one could say there may be no other prospects that make your, that makes your blood run faster. So here we are in you know a situation where the Democrats are disorganized. Um, they haven't put anybody forward, and the Republicans are um, you know showing leadership <laughs> through Liz Cheney. They're showing leadership. <laughs> it's really bizarre. 
uh, Stephanie, how bizarre is it and how much concern do you have about um, the fact that uh, the, the Democrats right now are not on a track to even have a chance at winning 2024? Oh, I think there's a tremendous chance. I certainly do. I mean, we've got Gavin Newsom. We've got um, Liz Warren. We've got Buttigieg. I, we have got... Did you say Liz of, Warren? Did you say, I love the I know she wants them. Yes, but, you know, if, if the economy is still screwed up and we're still inflation, you know, I mean, she's got the money game underhand. I mean, if you want to get some confidence... So you think, there, you think there are possibilities out there. But oh, what, about, think, what about the timing, you know, the timing? Because, you know, don't you think, okay, that, that the emergence of a ticket, a Democratic ticket, a clear 2024 ticket uh, should be happening now. You know, th these days in the U.S. of A., uh, you know, campaigns for president start a long time in advance. You have well, to socialize your candidate. What is it? It's Gavin. Gavin's doing. Amy Klobuchar is on the way. I mean, they're not. They're polite and not running up in Biden's face with their with their stick and sign, you know. But come on, they're out out there at on the bit, you know. They're they're out there waiting for their chance. Is I, there a parallel to Liz Cheney on the Democratic side? Well, they all are because all of them have as much courage. All of them have as much courage, and they have ethical uh, standards. Is there a well. single parallel? Yeah, I think uh, Amy Klobuchar could uh, take her on. I, I no problem. I think Gavin Newsom could too. And Buddha Judge is uh, is really pretty interesting and has such an a great uh, uh, thinking brain. He's uh, but anyway, he he may not uh, be in position for it. I agree. Maybe with him, he's not charging up too much out of out of the sec assistant secretary for transportation. Cynthia, your, your answer to the same question: What does it look like for the Democrats? Um, have they got their act together? Is it too soon, too late? Um, you know, do do they have a a, a single possibility that um, that parallels uh, Liz Cheney? I think Elizabeth Warren does. I think that she is that same level of calling a spade a spade without any regard to how it's going to affect her candidacy or anything else. She's all about calling the truth, the truth and making plans. She's got plenty, right? Plenty, she's got a plan for everything long before we even get there. So <clears throat> I think that's an important person. That Are you being call. realistic? Because she lost on that kind of thing last time around. Yeah. She, lo she lost oh. and, and it was the Democrats who didn't care for her position. Well, I don't know if she has a pathway to win, but I think she's that same level of um, integrity. And I would trust her to not just be a politician, you know, and um, bend under. And who would you trust more? Liz Cheney uh, versus Elizabeth Warren? Um, I think Liz Cheney would win, but I would like. Elizabeth Warren, of course, because I'm a Democrat and I believe in liberal things and, you know, bodily autonomy for women is mainly. So it's impossible, you know, to actually speculate and um, make make expectation on this. But, but Chuck, I mean, you know, I, I want to ask you wait, how. Wait, 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 wait. Cynthia has another point. Wait. Now I really am raising my hand, sorry. <laughs> but wait, wait, because I want to say one thing that always gets, it seems, um, sort of fluffed under the rug with all this other hubbub going on all over the country. Biden is doing a killer job. If you look at the kind of stuff that has already been signed into law since he took office, it's remarkable. It is very remarkable. And it seems to me they have enough money to start putting ads on the TV every five minutes so people know about it because it's getting shoved under the rug. So, well, I can I say, I think Cynthia's right and that we've got Biden's doing very well. I think uh, he can beat Trump as the polls have shown that. So he, he can beat anybody that comes up against him from the other side. Um, but, I, and I don't think, um, Liz Cheney can make president. I, I think she's got a lot of of leadership still to 
bring to the politics of America. But I don't think she can make president. She's short mm -hmm. on that. Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> Didn't mean to jump all over her turn. Well, me too. And I had to jump all over Cynthia. She got me going there. <laughs> some reality. Well, well what, I, what I'd like to cover here in the remaining time is, you know, what effect has the Liz Cheney experience, the phenomenon, have uh, on, on the whole enchilada um, and on the investigations on Trump, on his credibility, um, you know, to the base, um, on the shape of the Republican Party? I think we we've, we've kind of come to the conclusion that it hasn't had that much effect. But what effect does it have on the Democratic Party? Um, what effect will it have? You know, uh, three months from now, um, is she such a phenomenon? Uh, and and I, you know, this, this is a real question. Is she such a phenomenon that she's going to change history? Yeah. Well, one clear effect is hey, she's brought home to the Republican Party leadership, especially Mitch McConnell. Don't blow a chance to load up a bipartisan committee with a bunch of people who can throw monkey wrenches into their process. They blew that chance. And when it came in and the presentation of the January 6th hearings went on, all of those presenters, all of those speakers were Trump administration people, were far right wing people. They were not loading it, loading it with a political dog and pony show from the left. The second thing is, while she was doing that, I think Cynthia and Stephanie are exactly right. That lowered the tension enough over in the Senate for Schumer to do what has been an extraordinary job of negotiating. Uh, let me remind you that the Republicans, to the man and woman, voted against all of that Biden legislation. Uh, uh, the only way it, it passed is uh, through Joe Mankin and Kristen Sinema Mansion. And reconciliation. And, and, and reconciliation. I mean, all I'm saying is that this was not a, a clear and resounding win. This was um, a deft maneuver, which is actually not likely to happen again. And now the question is, can Schumer manage to do that with judicial appointments for the rest of Biden's two years? If they well, we know the answer, don't the we? Senate, that's going to uh, be a tough shot. Yeah. Yes, okay. I mean, but putting that aside for a moment and going to the question of Liz Cheney for a moment, um, you know, it, it, November will, 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 will be a uh, Republican's landslide, arguably, uh, and uh, the House will change. And the House leadership will change. And uh, uh, Liz Cheney will be out of a job. That committee will be out of a job, whether it has a, a report on the shelf or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and their investigation and all the material that comes out in the investigation will be shelved in, in a very dark corner of the shelf. Um, and there won't be another investigation. I promise you that. All right. So all the momentum that Liz Cheney has achieved on that committee, and it, it, it is impressive, um, will, I don't know, what will happen to it? And the fact is that Trump has been resilient, been uh, the Teflon Don. Uh, that, that we, they reserved that for a mafia boss in, in Brooklyn, by the way. He's the Teflon Don. He's gotten away with two impeachments. He's, he's gotten away so far with a lot of possible uh, indictments. Um, and he has, he has turned the whole thing about the subpoena upside down. And now uh, the press is not judging him, it's judging the FBI. Why? Why? Let me say it again. Why? So, you know, he's, he's really good. He's Teflon. Do you, think, do you think the momentum that she has created will continue uh, after November, November of this year? Um, Jay? I just want to say, you guys, I learned you guys that, as a group are really too much. Go, go ahead, Stephanie. Well, I want, I am saying that what I know now is one of the the principles of the Republican Party that what Liz Cheney did was the biggest sin. So the sin is not, you know, not being ethical or abiding by the values or the or the norms. It is not stepping stepping out of place. You have to stay in place with the group and the herd. There's no leaving the herd. 
without dire consequences. And that's what, what she's got. So that, that principle, which I didn't understand that, that that was what Republicans did, but that's what they do. And that's why we got two, two impeachments on ineffective and, and all the rest combined with Trump acting out the Nixon vice president Ag, Agnew, if you recall him and Rachel, uh, Maddow's Bagman, which was very successful and very informative. All of this um, Newt Gingrich stuff is what already Agnew was doing, which is turn it around and put it on somebody else. Have no shame. Keep on pushing. Leave no stone unturned, no matter what. Like with Trump is, is ecstatic over having another week delay on the, the decision about uh, what's going to happen to the affidavit. And it's totally... Um, uh, minimal, but he understands that those are the ways of going of of uh, strategically uh, um, assaulting um, this this country's um, best interests, which are to get him. But he knows how to do that. So I think the combination of the Republican herd and Trump's agnuism uh, and that new way of coming up against stuff. Uh, misdeeds, miscreants and misdeeds and fighting at institutions and all of of uh, what they're trying to do is what is the name of the game. You can take it all down and protect yourself. It's a new strategy, a mega strategy. And so, you I, know, going going back to this question of what happens after November, it leaves it leaves the prosecution on a federal level in the hands of Merrick Garland. Mm -hmm. Merrick Garland without the House you know, Investigative Committee. Merrick Garland really essentially without the That's Senate. That's right. Um, and the question I put to you, Chuck, is it is Merrick, Merrick Garland going to be able to continue this, um, you know, this uh, investigative uh, initiative against Trump, or will he be able to defer all of it? I remember at the end of the day, if he can get any kind of traction legally, uh, the Supreme Court will probably rule in his favor. You know? I mean, Trump. Uh, so how do you see all these investigations uh, proceeding uh, once the Republicans have taken over the House? I think Garland's made it very clear that he intends to continue, in his words, without fear or favor, regardless of what happens in the November midterm elections. He's taken the responsibility he's been given. And you got to remember, this is a guy who should be sitting on the Supreme Court, who should have been the vote to prevent the overturning of Roe v. Wade yep. and a lot of stuff that's coming down the pike in this coming term and the term beyond that. So the fight will continue. It's going to devolve to different people than the House committee, but it doesn't mean it's over. And Biden's leadership will no doubt continue to support it. He can't not support it. The question is what additional new leadership, whether it's Newsom, Cory Booker, Schumer, Schiff, Buttigieg, whoever, can they begin to put forward that's going to gain sufficient leverage with voters to be able to offer good prospects in 2024? That's yeah. the point for the next two years. Yeah. That's <clears throat> It's Mary. Well, so Cynthia, let me ask you, and we, we have to go around for the for the final statements now, but I, I want to frame this as a question for you too. Uh, so, you know, we've talked about uh, Liz Cheney and uh, how she might run for president, uh, or at least have a, a pulpit for that. Um, but starting pretty soon, she's going to be without her seat in the house. Um, and, and that may be early in terms of the process toward president to the presidential election. What can she do? Somebody suggested the other day that uh, she could go around the country and give speeches. Uh, she could raise money. <clears throat> she could join in a discussion of exactly what Merrick Garland is, is investigating. You know, She has the goods already. She has a thousand, uh, a thousand transcripts of a thousand interviews already. So what can she do to keep, keep the flame alive before we get to a presidential campaign? I remembered the name of her new group. <laughs> Sorry, it didn't, took me this long. Uh, Hack Watch, which is a terrible name. I hate the name. That's why it's. That's why I finally could go back and get it. 
um, hack watch. I, I'm pretty sure that, and don't, oh, don't hold me to it because I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. It's a terrible name. I'm hoping she's going to change the name, but that's what it's for. That's what she's going to be doing. In, and that's going to be the point of this group is to go around the country, you know, fundraising and, um, and. Would you pay money? Would you pay money to see her? No, because I turn on my television and watch it. So, <laughs> no. Um, but you know, I do want to add that when Chuck said Adam Schiff, I forgot about Adam Schiff. I would, he would be one that could be up there on that top tier, I think. Wait, I, I would put him above um, Pete Buttigieg in a minute. Over, <laughs> overexposed. Uh, he's not well received. At all. Hey, Stephanie, uh, last last uh, comments, but let me ask, uh, and we've talked about this possibility before. Suppose Joe Biden took a couple of new people uh, around around him in the Oval Office, you know, staffers, and they happen to be some of the people you've listed. Uh, you know, he offers a job, for example, to Gavin Newsom or Amy Klobuchar and brings them in and he appears with them. He lets them speak for him, lets them speak for the executive branch and all that. And he makes it somewhat clear that he considers them successors um, because he, he really doesn't consider himself a, a successor. Uh, would that work? But also uh, your summary of this discussion, your closing remarks. Oh my God. Well, I, I don't think that would do anybody any good at all. I mean, these people, like you say, they've got to be out there uh, on their own stump making their own things happen that that galvanize the nation take take attention away from Florida and DeSantis and and the and the other idiocy that's going on so Gavin Newsom has already done that a couple of times okay and um they're going to be of course a bulwark against all the abortion stuff so i mean california's what the biggest almost i mean so he's got a lot to work with to make to get himself some attention which I would think he's thinking to do more of. I mean, when he can make comments to DeSantis or to Florida, like, hey, come on out here to California because we've got it right and he competing with Florida for doing these things. So um, not only he, but others, I, if Amy Klobuchar has got the grit that it seems like she has and the ambition, you know, she'll start doing stuff too. I don't think Biden's cape on them will help at all. Biden is is phenomenal and I'm behind him a thousand percent and he's doing even more than ever I expected uh, against just, in, uh, in, you know, incalculable uh, opposition. And that is only getting worse by the day as all of them learn how to do all this new nasty thing better. But um, no, I think uh, that somebody else needs to t take the con, as they say in ceiling, and um, and Biden needs to get credit for what he's doing and go on. But I think we'll see that in the next uh, two years. And and with your point, what a great point you made, Jay. It is it is Merrick Garland that that's the only thing the Democrats have going for him. Because like as you say, as we go forward after this next election. All everything stops. It's over. What isn't done is over. And all we do is is hope that he will get that report out. And what happened to the report of um, on on the first report that the uh, first um, you know AG just killed it. Barr just killed the um, the that oh. report. Okay, we got we got to move on to yeah. Uh, okay, to so this the only hope we have is Merritt Garland. Let's go, Merritt. Chuck, your your closing message to everybody, uh, you could frame it around whether the democracy is more or less likely to survive now. Well, rather than that, I want to bring up a name we haven't mentioned, but who does deserve a lot of respect. She's done tremendous work for Democrats. Stacey Abrams. Imagine, imagine Biden firing Kufanari who's not cooperating with Marilyn Garland, Merrick Garland and the investigation and replacing him with Stacey Abrams. <laughs> yes, I mean, that's a really interesting integration of all we've been talking about. <laughs> I like that. I follow okay. with power. All right. Well, I mean, it's not only, it's not only uh, the guy in Homeland Security, it's a, a number of Trumpers that has somehow remained in government. They'd be cleaned out. Right. Here we are at the end of our discussion. 
uh, Cynthia Sinclair, uh, Stephanie Stoll Dalton, and uh, Chuck Compton. Thank you very much, all of us, for joining us on uh, America, American Issues Take Two. I uh, hope we can do this again uh, soon. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.